Uh, one big round of applause for Truett, please. Thank you, Truett. Hey, everybody. It's good to be here. All right. So this is a philosophy forum, and I think philosophy is an abstract process and an abstract concept to a lot of people. So today, uh, I consider myself a philosopher very actively. Uh, I majored in philosophy, and I would consider thinking to probably be my favorite hobby. So I wanted to share a little bit of my process and some of my paradigms and some of my world views with you guys and also what I think philosophy is about and hopefully maybe you can adapt some of those processes and use them in your own life, right? Cool, so as a philosopher, I see my role as sharing what I've learned from the high places. Has anyone read a book called Zen and the o Art of Motorcycle Ma uh, Maintenance? Oh, cool, yeah. Okay, so in that book, he talks about how it's not the top of the mountain that supports life, it's the sides of the mountain. And if you go up to the top of a mountain, you can't stay there. Eventually, you have to come back down. And I kind of see philosophers and specialists in general as doing this type of thing. I think of myself as an idea mechanic. Uh, so it's good... If you're thinking about a literal mechanic, it's good to know a little bit about your bike, but you don't necessarily have to learn all the ins and outs of fixing your bike. There's a guy who specializes in that, and there's a lot of subjects and things that you don't necessarily need to be fully uh, immersed in to benefit from. You just go to the mechanic and he fixes it for you. And as a philosopher, I like to wrestle with and deal with these really complicated, heavy, high place ideas and then kind of simple them down and share them with my friends. So that's one of my roles. I see myself as a philosopher uh, to help other people think and to grow and to question the nature of the reality and the things that they believe. So I see myself doing this in two different ways, both with products and processes. Products are things like paradigms, worldviews, guidelines, rules, and things like that. Like the golden rule. Anybody heard of the golden rule? Yeah? Golden rule is do unto others as you'd have them do to you, right? This is an example of a maxim or a paradigm, something that you use to think and to navigate and to assess the way you live your life. Um, but I find this kind of problematic, and that brings me to my next thing that philosophers do, uh, process. Uh, so when I was studying, majoring in philosophy in college, we often said that the role of a philosopher is conceptual analysis, which I like to think of as like a, a thought engineer, an idea engineer. We tinker, we make ideas, and we see if they work, and we try to make them better. So the golden rule doesn't really work for me. For example, uh, when I'm alone, when I'm alone. When I'm upset, I like to be alone. I don't want to really be around other people. Anybody like that? Yeah? Okay. So not everyone raised their hand. So that wouldn't really work for everyone. So I find that statistically most of the time, the golden rule is not the best thing to apply. So I created the silver rule. And I just make the golden rule a double negative. Don't do to other people as you don't want done to yourself. And I find that's much more statistically viable. That works more in my reality, and my experiences. So I have today three rules, three pillars of my paradigm, as I like to call them, that I want to share with you guys and show you some of the conceptual analysis processes that led me to that. And maybe you can use these in your life if you think they're cool. Any questions so far? Groovy. OK, number one, pay attention or awareness. Uh, people talk about mindfulness a lot. I think that this cannot be uh, understated. I think it's really important to be in the present because living in the past will only bring you pain and living in the future will only bring you anxiety. And of course you want to reflect upon your past experiences to make better choices and to navigate your future. And of course you want to think about the future and prepare. But it's still good to be grounded in the moment and focus on the now. Temper your ambition. Don't be too goal-oriented or want too much. So this is, this is something I want to explore for a bit, specifically about concept analysis. So this is an interesting thought to me. Uh, the way value is assessed, whether it's an object or an idea or, or whatever it is, is the basic concept of supply and demand, right? 
<clears throat> so things that have a low supply are more valuable than those things. There's plenty of, even if they're intrinsically valuable. For example, water doesn't cost very much, but it's li you literally need it to live. And diamonds are very, very expensive, but if all the diamonds in the world were gone, we'd be cool. And if all the water was gone, we'd super not be cool. But diamonds are way more valuable than water. So it's supply and demand or scarcity that drives and evaluates the value for things. So I was thinking about that, and it occurred to me that the things I have are not scarce, and the things I don't have are scarce. So it seems like this basic idea that's woven into the nature of value assessment is always going to make the things I don't have appear more valuable because they're scarce. And this seemed really dangerous to me. This seemed like a circle of just, I'm always going to want more. So that's what I mean by temper your ambition. It's good to want and to want to better yourself, but you need to have an idea of good enough because if things are not good enough, if your job, you don't make enough money or your girlfriend's not hot enough or whatever it is, you're just going to continually fall into this circle of flawed value assessment. Cool. Enjoy the ride. Happiness is a process like games, dancing, or playing music. The point of playing a song is not to get to the end of it. The point of dancing is not to finish the dance. The point of a game is not necessarily to win in the sense that if you went to play soccer with your friends and you got there and the ball was already in the goal, you wouldn't just quit and go home. I mean, the goals matter, but they also kind of don't. It's more of a process. So all of these to me fall under pillar number one, awareness. Questions? Groovy. Oop. Number two, be real or authenticity. Be yourself and be true to yourself. Make time for reflection and know who you are. <clears throat> I think we lose a lot of this in our society today. I think there's less value placed on being alone and finding quiet time to think. So here's another conceptual analysis thing that I've stumbled upon. In life, I think we would all agree that you can't have it all, right? can't have it all. There's going to be experiences and objects and things that you're going to miss out on. So you really have to decide what you want in order to try to get it. So I find that if you don't know who you are, you probably don't know what you want. And if you don't know what you want, you're definitely not going to get it. So if you want things in life, and I'm sure we all do, it really helps to know who you are and really boil down that those things that you want because in life you can't have it all. So I think there is, there should be more value placed on self-reflection and figuring out who you are. Blaze your own trail. Don't compare yourself with others. They walk, your, they walk their own paths. Measure yourself not against other people, but against who you were. In today's heavily social medialized world, I think it's all too easy to compare ourselves to other people. And I think that can be distracting and very dangerous. And you can lose track of who you are and what you really care about. And this last one I think is really important. Be more selfish slash self full. I think I'm going to make a new word and add this suffix full to self. Because uh, has anyone read The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand? Cool. This is another example of The High Place, where I don't recommend you read this book. It's really heavy and dark. I, I mean, I enjoyed it, but this is one of those things you guys don't need to get into. I'll just tell you about it if you want and save you a thousand pages of, of craziness. Uh, so in The Fountainhead, she talks about how people should be more selfish. They should have this sense of self, but she kind of redefines the word and uses it in a new way. And I don't like that because selfish is a, is a word that we need and we shouldn't change it. But we should say selfful be more selfful, have more of a sense of self. I've been in many social situations where, well, let me start by saying this. I think it's good when you're in a group or when you're in other people in a society, as we all are, to consider the feelings of others and not do anything to make anyone upset and, and try to do what's best for the group. But I think we've gotten a little carried away with that, where people don't think about what they want at all, and they completely lose themselves in the group dynamic, what's best for the group. I've been in countless situations where I'm in a group of people, and no one really wants to do the same thing, so we all compromise, and everyone ends up not doing what they want. And I think that's ridiculous. If we're in a group of people, and we all want to do different stuff, maybe we could all just part ways and do different things. 
So I think it's good to have this sense of self and to look within. This is a quote that really stuck with me. I think it's from Plato when I was in college. What is right and what is wrong? Need we ask another to know such truths? Basically, that a lot of understanding the world just comes from within. You don't really need... If you see someone doing something wrong, you don't be like, hey, hey, is that, is that okay? Can he do that? No, you just know and you feel it. It's very intrinsic. And I think we should tap into that more and listen to that more. Be real. Have a sense of authenticity. Questions? Number three, stay positive. Attitude. Attitude trumps circumstance. I'm what I like to call an optimistic nihilist. I believe the world is pointless in an objective way. I just don't think there's a point unless you pick one that's subjective. But I don't really see a problem with that. Anybody ever played the game Minecraft? We got one? Ooh, okay. That was the only one. Okay. I know there's some nerds out there. Don't be shy. All right. Minecraft is one of my favorite games, and it's a unique game in a very specific way that there are no objectives. You start the game, and then that's it. There's no go here. There's no find this. There's no fight him. There's no build this. And that's just like life. There's no objectives. You're just, here you go. Do nothing or something or whatever. And I love that. I think that's what makes Minecraft po po uh, popular is that is that mindless of it? And you know, if life is a game with no rules, like Minecraft, then how can you lose? I think that's really beautiful. So stay positive, even though it's all pointless. Expand your circles of empathy. And what I mean by that is we all have these circles of empathy. We all have people that we care about more than others. And it probably starts with your family. You probably care about your family more than strangers, which is reasonable. That's your tightest circle of empathy. And then outside of that, maybe your neighborhood, uh, maybe your state, maybe your country, then maybe your religion, maybe your race, I don't know. You know, you have these circles of people that you care about to different degrees. And I would encourage you all to expand your circles of empathy and be just more inclusive in the way you care about people, keeping a positive attitude. Uh, my last presentation was on the law of attraction and the secret, so I'm not going to go into that. You find what you think, what you seek. Um, I think you guys are familiar with that, right? We're going to move through that. Be kind. Love yourself just as much as you love others, if not more. I talk with a lot of my friends about their romantic endeavors, and I share a lot of mine, and I, everybody seems to, I mean, we all want love. Everything needs love. Uh, and I want you to imagine this ideal partner that you want and desire and all the things you would say to them and all the things you would do for them. And do and say those things to yourself. Don't forget to love yourself first. If you imagine your partner having a bad day and what they'd say to you uh, and how, what you would respond with and how to cheer them up and what you would do for them, do that for yourself. Please remember to be kind and love yourself first. Practice gratitude exercises. Every morning when I wake up, I write down some stuff to kickstart my day and one of them is things that I'm grateful for and that really helps me get a really positive mindset going right early in the morning. I've also heard of things called gratitude rocks, where you put a rock in your pocket and every time you touch it, you say something you're grateful for just in your head. People do it, necklaces, bracelets, your car keys, anything. This is a good way to help cultivate kindness and a positive attitude. And please don't forget that everyone is just someone and that we're all caught in this mystery together that nobody knows what the hell's going on, and we're just trying to make the best of things. So this guy who cut you off, or the guy who fucked up your order, or the girl who d said she wasn't gonna go on that date with you, that's just some other person, just like you, who has no idea what they're, we're just, we're just doing the best we can here. We're just trying to get through the day. So be kind to those people. Uh, and it can sometimes be hard to remember what hope looks like. Uh, there's a lot of quotes about this, how it's always darkest before the dawn and whatnot, right? I've got one that I like from the movie Blow. It's a movie that really shaped my childhood. Uh, sometimes you're flush and sometimes you're bust and when you're up, it's never as good as it seems and when you're down, you never think you'll be up again but life goes on. And I think it, it's all too easy to slip into this darkness where basically what he's saying here. So just remember that hope is easy to forget. So try not to, try not to forget it. Okay, I said I only had three rules, but whoop, bonus rule. Balance. 
the master skill. So you might be saying, Truett, what about all those circumstances where your rules don't apply? I completely agree. I completely agree. I completely agree. I completely, I put rule and agree together. I completely agree. All rules have exceptions. And I've always liked this quote, know the rules well so you can break them effectively. That's me. I'm always like, what's the exact rule? Okay, I'm going to get around that. I love that. Yeah, be wary of extremes, all things in moderation, even moderation. So if you love these, and I do, I've been practicing these for over 10 years, and they really help guide my life in a, in a really good way. Uh, but I moderate them. There's definitely times to not do these things. Love, hate like love can be dangerous, and don't do either too much. So if you dislike something, like let's say littering, it's probably not a good idea to punch somebody in the face if you see them throw a cigarette butt on the ground, even though you hate littering. You want to temper that a bit and be kind of balanced. And lastly, last thing I'm going to say is float as much as you paddle. Don't want too much, try too hard, or take anything too seriously. Anybody ever been tubing? Do you know what tubing is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's an it's an American thing. It's fun. Uh, you you find a you find a really chill river and you you get in a tube and you float, and uh, <laughs> that's it. That's all you do. It's called tubing. You usually drink and stuff. Uh, so when you're tubing, you can paddle. Yeah, but not a lot. You just got your hands. Mostly you're just floating. And I think life is like that. We're on just a river, and you're probably all gonna get to this place no matter what. And you can steer but just a little bit and never as much as you really want to or think you should be able to. So um, remember to float sometimes and just not try so hard because that's inevitably the way it's going to go. Uh, any questions? Cool. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. All right. Thank you guys. Wonderful.